Hello and welcome back to Duck Reads. Today we'll be reading Chapter 3 of Watanagashi from Higurashi When They Cry Hall. Oh. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. Listen up, everybody. If you don't take cooking seriously, somebody's gonna get hurt. This is part of your education as well, so don't fool around and do it seriously. A lazy, yeah, wafted through the class in response. Half of the school day today was going to be home economics class. The plan was for everybody to make curry rice and give it to the forest rangers who let this building be rented out as a school. If everybody were making curry in the same pot, it would have been more of a party-like atmosphere, but this was a school after all. Excluding the youngest students, each one of us would be making our own curry, with the results being judged. Alright everybody, it may be that nowadays curry is an easy meal anybody can make, but it has its roots in traditional Indian cuisine. Even though we've altered it a bit in the Japanese style, it is still instilled with the knowledge and culture of ancient India. Absolutely do not neglect that fact. I'll have words with anybody who doesn't take this seriously, so be prepared for that. That seemed like a needlessly passionate sermon on curry. Well, whatever. It's rumored that Chie Sensei has devoted her life to curry. She'll probably be a pretty strict judge. As long as you're not failing, your grade in home act doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter at all. I wouldn't say that if I were you. The teacher's a tyrant when it comes to curry. What the heck does that even mean? A curry tyrant? Never heard of that before. You see, our normally mild-mannered teacher, for some unfathomable reason, is a stickler for curry. Unyieldingly so. Yeah, it's said that every year she goes on a journey to India to research mythical curry. This is just a rumor, but it seems that she eats curry rice three meals a day, and if she occasionally has something else, it always has to be curry flavored. That's not unyielding, that's unnatural. Is she part of an evil cult or something? Besides, doesn't curry top the list when it comes to junk food? Curry three times a day is just weird nutritionally speaking, and... Thunk, thunk, thunk. Embedded into the table by my fingertips, a chef's knife, ladle, and spatula hummed gently as they still quivered. Wait, a ladle? The teacher, while still mixing her own pot, was looking this way, smiling. K-Chan, shh! If you say any more, you'll be sleeping with the fishes! Saying even a little bit more would make my situation a lot more dire. Yeah, yeah. Just be serious and make your curry properly and everything's good, alright? I don't think it's going to be that easy today. Look, Michan is... It's written all over her face. If the playing field is even and we're being judged, there's no way this won't turn into a competition. Looks like we're all on the same page. It's a cooking contest! I knew it! There's no way Mion would leave such an enticing event alone. How shall we determine the victor? By how the teacher judges it? As if saying, but wait, there's more. The teacher reappeared with the principal in tow. The purpose of today's event is to show appreciation for the people at the forestry service, so they'll be judging the results with me. Yep, your teacher and I, as well as five people from the forestry service, will be judging your cooking. Good luck to everyone. <laughs> Even the principal? Looking around, it seemed like the interest of everybody in the class had been piqued. So that's what's happening. This isn't going to just be some casual curry cook-off. Rana is good at making curry. I'm not going to lose today. My grade is cooking in a group, so I'm together with Rika. That's unfair. I'm pretty sure that Rika is good at cooking. 
My curry is so tasty it'll send shivers down your spine. What about Mion? She doesn't seem like she's too good at cooking. Her type has always been bad at this kind of thing. But Mion continued to look unconcerned. <laughs> I'll tell you what Keichan is thinking right now. Mion is definitely bad at cooking. Am I right? Uh, I don't like the way she said that. It couldn't be. Mion couldn't possibly. At that moment, the teacher's whistle sounded. Alright, everybody, are you ready? Be very careful with the knives. Start! The call to arms had sounded. We had to use an outdoor kit to cook the rice, but it wasn't that difficult for a camping veteran like me. Put the rice into the canister, push your palm to the bottom, and fill with water to just above the wrist. Are you alright with only that much water? If you don't put in more, it could be bad. You filthy liar. If I put in any more, I'll just be left with some half-cooked porridge. Satoko, if that's meant to be a trick, it won't work. I'm used to cooking rice with these utensils. First it starts to bubble, and then the steam starts to puff. And don't take out the lid no matter what. Hmm, Keiji-kun, you're amazing. This is a little unexpected. Did you learn this at summer camp? My dad really likes to go camping, see? Whenever summer comes around, our family goes a lot. So this means everybody is good at cooking the rice. In other words, the critical part of this challenge will be the curry. Hmm. <laughs> curry is Rika's specialty. We'll cream you all. You lost me at Rika's. Why don't you help with the cooking, too? Hmm. Maybe Satoko-chan is helping the most by doing nothing at all. Eh. The ends justify the means. I just have to win. That was a pretty malicious comment for Rena. And Satoko took it hook, line, and sinker. Rena could only apologize between fits of laughter while Satoko chased her around. Well now, should we move on to the curry? For now, the battle truly begins. After rinsing off the carrots, potatoes, and other standard vegetables, I grasped the knife. A gulp. What will today's curry taste like? As Rana hummed along, her very well-practiced hands wielded her knife. The rhythmical sound of the knife hitting the cutting board hearkened to the kind of images of days long past. Simply put, it was perfect. It was so calm and practiced, I seriously don't stand a chance. I looked over at Satoko and Rika-chan. Satoko was in charge of washing the vegetables, while Rika-chan was in charge of peeling them. That's what I heard being discussed, but Rika-chan's knife skills are something else as well. She was happily rotating the potato and peeling it quite quickly. On top of that, the peel spanned the entire potato. What was that called again? Katsuramuki? I've heard that peeling a vegetable in one loop around that is a highly regarded technique. She picked up the peel from the sink and carved a pair of eyes into it with her knife. It's a snake. Roar! Saying that, she placed the longly peeled potato skin on top of the head of a boy from her group. She wasn't even breaking a sweat. When it comes to Rika-chan and cooking, I couldn't even hold a candle to her. But... Roar? Do snakes make that sound? Alright then, how's Neon doing? She's definitely just fumbling along. There's no way she can peel a potato so effortlessly like that. Absolutely no way! This can't be! You've gotta be kidding me! This is a trick! She's using special effects! Where's the wire? She's definitely using a wire. <laughs> Here, take a look-see. As if she had already won, Mion proudly showed me the elongated potato skin. You didn't know, Keiji? Mi was taught how to cook by her grandma. Not just cooking. From sewing to flower arrangement to playing the koto, from marksmanship to radio operation, even helicopter piloting is but one of the myriad of things she can do. 
Strangely enough, the latter items were more realistic. It was the first few items on that list that seemed like a lie. She's actually really good at cooking. It's just such a hassle that she never does it, though. D damn it! I'm also really good at cooking. Especially Chinese food. Keiichi, boiling something and pouring it into a bowl doesn't count as cooking. Shot down before I could even say it. Ho ho ho, too bad for you. Today, keiichi san shall be assuredly languishing in defeat all alone. Clank. Tough words from somebody who can't even cook by herself. <laughs> well, Rika. There, there. I'll destroy Keiichi for you. Gah! This does not look good. Everybody is smirking at me. Don't raise the white flag yet, Keiichi Maibara. Don't throw away this match. Calm down and think. Not about how to peel these potatoes well, but about how to win this challenge. There's too many people watching. I'm going to work at another sink. Saying that, I gathered up all the vegetables and left that spot behind. Will Keiichi-kun be alright? I'm worried he might cut himself with his knife. Let's see what Keichan's doing. No matter how hard I try peeling these, if I slip up at this speed, I'll lop my fingers right off. Then there's only one thing left to do. Tomito-kun, Okabura-kun. Oh, you guys were in a group of four, huh? It was the two underclassmen that had become my sworn brothers ever since the event at that toy store last Sunday. They had been paired with two girls for their group. Yep, both the girls are pretty good at cooking. So both of us can just mess around and we'll be okay. Both of them pointed at the girls. They're not as good as Rena, but they're both good enough at handling a knife. I'll get straight to the point. At this rate, I'm going to lose this contest. Give me the vegetables your group has peeled already. M my butter son, that's pretty much theft. But depending on what's in it for us... In other words, it depends on the terms of negotiation. Hmm, quite bold of you guys. Well, that's to be expected. Then let's do this. If I win, I'll let you eat the curry that Satoko and Rika-chan's group makes. How about that? Eh? Uh, uh, I don't know about that. Both of them were hesitant after such a weighty proposal. Just one more little push seems in order. Very well then, let's make them an offer they can't refuse. I pulled both of them close by the shoulders and made my offer in a hushed tone. Of course, that includes the part that Satoko and Rika-chan have already eaten some of. I'll even throw in the spoons. Splooge. A red mist spouted vigorously from the noses of the two underclassmen. Hmm? Keiichi-san is also pretty good at this. Those are some very nice potatoes. Having brilliantly cleared the vegetable peeling challenge, I returned to my comrades in triumph. Well, amazing, amazing! Keiichi-kun's peeling is really good. Hmm. That's not quite right. But Keiichi-chan's Barrett isn't a potato, but his fangs. Yeah, I'm super serious about this. I'll crush you all. Having finished with preparing the vegetables, next is to boil a pot of water, then add the vegetables in order of which takes longest to cook. I learned this part from my mother when we went camping. But just cooking in order, it probably won't garner a lot of points. Looking over at Rena, she had a variety of vegetables cooking together in a delicate balance. She wasn't being ambitious or calculating a way to win the game. She was making delicious food with a mother's touch. I have a feeling that I could somehow compete with Mion in terms of technique, but I would be no match for Rena. She was way out of my league. When my mother makes curry, you see, she always uses lots of ingredients. That's why Rena's curry uses a lot of ingredients as well. I really wanted to take all night and stew it nice and slow. How? Oh. I beg of you, will you please help just a little with my curry? <laughs> No. This is one of our club activities. Rena won't lose. Ugh. When she enters club mode, even the normally kind Rena becomes an enemy. 
Looks like Rika-chan is cooking apples as well. Ugh, she's a pro at this. How about Mion? What? Mion, you... What the heck is that? Where did you get meat from? I predicted what we would be doing today by looking at the schedule. So I prepared accordingly. My curry is going to be... Marvelous. Upon closer inspection, it looks like Mion brought her own vegetables and spices and other ingredients. They were spread all over the place. Mion, just for today, you brought all this stuff from your house? No, objection! Chie sensei, there's no way this is allowed, is it? Objection overruled. As long as it makes for delicious curry, anything goes. Ah, for that normally serious teacher to go so far as to append a star to the end of her sentence. Just as the rumor said, she's a through and through curry freak. Rena and Rika-chan are naturally gifted chefs. I've come with thorough preparations. And, Kei-chan, what about you? <laughs> it's hopeless. In the grand scheme of cooking, peeling the vegetables is only a small part of it. The hurdles I must overcome are just too numerous and too high. My san over here! Turning around, I saw the voices calling me belonged to the two underclassmen from earlier, Tomito-kun and Okamura-kun. What's up, you guys? Hmm? What's up with that pot? Is that from your group? Switch this with your pot before somebody notices. I think that the curry the girls from our group made, at the very least, is better than what you could make. Y you guys? For me? Don't get the wrong idea. If you don't win, then we... That is... Oh, that's right. If I don't win, then the talk of eating Satoko and Rika-chan's curry goes right out the window. It seems like you guys are getting riled up about this, too. Sorry, I'm in your debt. But I'm surprised the girls in your group agreed to this. My san we're also serious about this. Filling in on day duty three times... These guys, to assure me victory, have paid the price. That gaze filled with burning conviction from my underclassmen. Yeah, I'm not fighting this alone. I'm fighting this with everyone. Leave it to me. Save some room, boys. I'll definitely let you eat your fill. We shall be eagerly awaiting your victory. Gets a gas stove, so controlling the heat is easy. All that's left is to let it stew a bit. The delicious smell of curry began wafting upwards. The pot gifted to me by my two underclassmen certainly drew some double takes. Rena even looked surprised when she came to take a look, so it must be pretty good. Kei-chan, you're pretty good. It looks like this will be a good match right down to the bitter end. Rena wants to eat Keiichi Kun's curry. Curry! Rena's curry and Mion's curry too. Everybody's a worthy opponent. I've done my very best, but I'm not sure of the outcome. Keiichi san, Rika's calling you. Go see what she wants. What? Rika chan's calling me? What could it be? Well, whatever. While I'm at it, I can gather some intelligence on the enemy. Rika chan was doodling on the ground in front of the pot because all that's left is to let it stew. Even then, it's good to know that she doesn't leave the stove unattended. Hey, Rika-chan, how's yours doing? It's Mr. Curry. Uh-huh. Rika-chan was doodling something strange. It introduced it as Mr. Curry. Mr. Curry is amazing. He shoots beans from his eyes. Pew pew. Apparently, Mr. Curry shoots beans from his eyes. Drawing a bean with a stick, she etched the line towards my feet. Does this mean I've been shot with a laser? Ah! Oh, barrier! Beam reflect! I took another stick in my hand and reflected the beam, striking Mr. Curry. Mr. Curry can shoot missiles from his stomach. Pshoo! Hua! My butter is super electromagnetic barrier and retaliatory beam. Mr. Curry absorbs the beam energy and fires his impulse wave cannon. Rika-chan and I scratched at the ground, thoroughly engrossed in our doodle war. Wait a moment. Hey, 
Rika-chan, you called me here for a reason, right? Yes, I called you, but I've already fulfilled my purpose. At that moment, a chill ran up my spine. Already fulfilled her purpose? They... they got me! Heading back to my pot, standing there, just as I feared, was Satoko. With no questions asked, I dropkicked the back of her head. Well, what do you think you're doing? You know better than to do that to a lady's head. Who cares about that? Satoko, did you mix something in with my Kurt? How impertinent. I haven't fallen that far. Despite what you may think, I'm a fair person, you know. Then, what's with this incomprehensible line of ladles and plates? Leaving them all in these unstable positions, if they fall over, what will you do? At that moment, a gentle breeze blew by, knocking over a ladle that was stood up on its end. The ladle, like a domino, fell over and knocked over the next cooking utensil in a row. Whap, 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 whap. Clank, clank, thud, thud. This is art. Come to think of it, Domino World Record Challenges were quite the rage on the television a while back. K-Chan! The frying pan! I didn't even have time to react. The chain reaction knocked over a cutting board, then a frying pan, then next after that was my pot. Crash. The fry pan struck my pot full force, tipping it over. The contents cruelly spilled out, and now my masterpiece was being sampled by the schoolyard. I stared. Dumbfounded. It was such a beautiful and elaborate mousetrap that, for a moment, I lost touch with reality. Oh my, oh my, this is a catastrophe. I didn't do anything, you hear me? <laughs> At the very last moment, I had let my guard down. I ignored the culinary incompetent Satoko for far too long. Even if she couldn't cook, Satoko still had this method of fighting back. Just then, Rena, who had been sampling her own pot, let out a scream. What? what? Rena's curry is salty? Salty? Was Rena also sabotaged? And what about Mion? My rice is salty! I've been had! Ha 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 ha! With this, all the obstacles in my way have been taken care of before the fight even begins. All that effort wasted. So sad, so sad. So very, very sad. Riga-chan and Satoko rubbed my dumbfounded head to their heart's content. Pushing the dust together, it was about time for the meals to be judged. The delicious odor of curry spread throughout the courtyard. The members of the forestry service, to whom we owed gratitude for their daily work, were guided to their seats. The principal gave a bit of a ceremonial introduction. Next, the teacher expressed her desire for them to judge the curry contest. The men from the forestry service seemed to like that kind of thing, and gave their enthusiastic approval. Well then, is everybody finished? We'll now have all the judges sample your cooking. Everybody in the class brought up their painstakingly made curry and arranged them on the desk. The only club members who managed a decent result were Rika Chan's group. Knowing full well it was a failure, Raina plated her curry for the judges. She already knew she was going to get a low score. But at least she was still able to serve hers. Both Mion's and my curry were completely obliterated, so we couldn't even line them up on the table. The judges started from the curry made by the lower grades. They had a lively discussion, praising the food. Finally, it was our curry's turn. Next up is Ryugu-kun's curry. Yes, this looks quite appetizing. The principal cheerfully shoveled a spoonful of Reina's salty curry into his mouth. Of course, his expression immediately changed. Oh my, what happened, Ryugu-san? It seems so delicious when you were cooking it. Chie-sensei must have had some expectations, judging from her disappointment. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I might have added a bag of salt by accident. The rest of the judges grimaced after they each had a bite. I feel sorry for them. Failure is but the seasoning for success. I'm looking forward to next time. Do your best. Saying that, the principal devoured the rest of the oversalted curry in one go. Truly a man amongst men. Rena was down and out. Her offensive capabilities were something else, but she was defeated due to her weak defense. Well then, please savor our curry next. I see Furude-san's group put a lot of effort into their curry. Let's see here. Hmm, it's simple, but very nicely done. There was also the incident with Rena's salted curry right before this, so the judge's assessment was extraordinarily high. Maybe not just, 
just extraordinary, but perhaps today's forerunner? The judges began a heated debate. One of those judges let out a sigh as he removed a chunk of carrot with his spoon. Yeah, this kid's curry really isn't half bad, but I don't like carrots, you see. Personally, I think that carrots are a staple of curry, but I guess to each their own. However, seeing that, Riga-chan read the nameplate on the chest of his coveralls and began to speak. That's no good, Kyoji. You have to eat your carrots. What is she saying all of a sudden? Everybody turned to Rika-chan with a stunned look. But what Rika-chan just did was super effective. The carrot-hating judge began stuffing his face with curry while tears streamed down his face. Kyoji, there's seconds if you want them. Sup, <laughs> mommy. While crying like that, he continued to shovel curry into his mouth. That's right. Rika-chan's curry was by no means simple. No, that curry had the taste of a mother's cooking. With the carrot-hating judge out of the picture, Rika-chan's assessment was unanimous. Oh, 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 nobody can stand up to Rika's curry. Sadako let off a shrill laugh as she declared victory. But at that moment... Don't be fooled, my esteemed judges. Don't be deceived into thinking that this meager slop is the taste only a mother could provide. What you people actually wanted to eat was this kind of curry, wasn't it? Oh... All of a sudden, in all its perfect glory, Mion's curry. Not only the judges, but the teacher, the underclassmen, and of course myself, could only gasp in admiration. Hamburg steak with demi-glazed sauce and a fresh salad? It's a set. It wouldn't be stretching it to say that this was a full course meal. It's perfect, perfectly made. Amazing, amazing. Michan, you're amazing. Michan, you're amazing. Sadako was also shocked. Even Rika-chan couldn't hide her surprise. It seemed the victor was decided without even needing a taste. Of course the hamburger was hand-kneaded. The salad also had a home-style dressing, but of professional quality. And the curry, not even a micron of grit. This is sublime. Truly a taste to savor, Sonozaki-san. This curry is no doubt a living testimony to 6,000 years of Indian knowledge and beautiful harmony with Japanese cuisine. I'm elated. This deserves full marks. I'm giving it 100 points. Nah, you're welcome. I'm just trying to set an example as class representative. Mion bowed politely, and then winked at us with a smirk on her face. I admit defeat. There's no way this is happening. I'm certain I sabotaged that pot of rice. That's right. Sadako had dumped salt into Mion's rice cooker, which should have ruined it. At that moment, it hit me. I spun back towards my own canister. That's why! At some point, my cooking canister had been opened, its contents completely empty. Damn you, Mion! You used my rice! That's no fair! Hand over half of your curry. Mion clucked her tongue and waved her finger at me as a smirk washed over her face. Whoa there, k John. You're not taking this seriously enough. You gave up at the last moment. I didn't. That's the difference between us. As soon as you give up, it's all over. Gah! I couldn't even properly voice my shame. Me, chan I feel sorry for keiji kun Just give him at least a little. It's fine, it's fine. This is a lesson. Kei-chan just learned that you shouldn't give up on the contest until it's all over, right? It loathes me to say it, but Mion is right. To give up so quickly on the match was my own folly. For Mion to have brought that to my attention, I should actually be thankful to her. Well then, didn't that mean that even in this situation, I shouldn't give up? My curry was overturned while it was still in the pot, and I don't have any rice left. How in the blazes am I not supposed to lose hope in this situation? M my barasan. Tomitokun and Okamura-kun suddenly appeared. Damn it! Even though my protégés had tried so hard, I wasn't able to meet their expectations. It was an accident. There was nothing you could do. Both of them were dejected. Gah! I couldn't accept defeat so easily. I was their senior. What would I be if I didn't pick up the broken pieces of the dream I had shown them? I just learned it from Mion just now, didn't I? Don't throw away the contest. Not until the last moment. Think, Keiji Maibara, think! 
Not about how to make more curry, about how to win the match. Hmm. Aha! I had an idea. I didn't think it could turn the tables, but it was better than nothing. Tell me, Takun, come and wash your hands. Help me out. Well, Kamura kun there's something I want you to find. Okay, gotcha. Both of them dispersed after receiving these instructions. Oh? How is Kei-chan going to flounder about at the end? Why don't you show me? Nobody likes a stubborn fool, you know. Shut up. Just sit there and watch the last card I have to play. First off, Mion, I'll be taking some of your rice. I won't let you say no. I don't really care. It's salty, after all. It's okay if Rana helps too, right? Keiji-kun is in trouble right now. Hearing you say that is very reassuring. Well then, Rena, go make some tea. Oh, he doesn't trust me. Next, Satoko. Also, Rika-chan. I challenge you to a side bet. W what did you say? We'll listen to your request. This is my duty to my two protégés who shed blood, sweat, and tears for my sake. Satoko, Rika-chan, if I receive a perfect score, I'll be taking your curry. Nothing for you to eat. You need to know when to stop joking around. I'll be giving a big no to that. No, it's alright, Satoko. Take him up on it. Firmly patting the top of Satoko's head, Mion said those words with all the gravitas of a club president. You handicapped him this much, didn't you? There's no way he can make up for that. So meet him head on. No matter how hard he struggles, he's not going to make a comeback. Right? G that may be true, but... I don't mind. Keiichi, go for it. Yeah! The judges, seemingly growing tired of sampling the various curries, were debating each entry. From what little I overheard, it seemed that Mion's impending victory was not in question. By the way, what happened to my Baracoon's curry? I still haven't tried it yet. Yeah, the pot with my curry in it fell over. Hmm, <laughs> is that so? That's a real shame. I may have lost my curry, but that doesn't mean I've lost this contest. I'll have everybody singing my praises. My combative posturing had drawn the attention of all the judges. First of all, just be quiet and eat these, please. I'll listen to your complaints after that. This is my cooking! M my Baracoon, that's... Hmm. Onigiri, huh? The judges smiled wryly at the simple fare that was quite in contrast to the preceding bravado. Rana poured tea into the cup she had brought over from the break room. He he's making a mockery of this. There, look! There's not even any filling. It's nothing more than salted onigiri. This isn't even worthy of being called a contest anymore. It's true, the amount of salt might be a little much, but... Rana's expression told me that she thought this was a great idea, but it might still not be enough to win the match. Maibura-san, is this really enough to make a comeback? Gentlemen, you did well. It's alright. Just watch. The judges were chewing with their mouths full and sipping at the tea. Nobody was singing praises or awestruck. They were just quietly chowing down. It seems that Kei-chan has learned how to use some rather underhanded tricks. This might be difficult. Yeah, that's right. Rana understands that now, too. What do you mean? Why is everybody just quietly eating that much? You see, Satoko-chan, that's because the judges are actually... Tired of eating curry! Because they were judges, they had to sample each and every offering. And because they were from small children, because they were made to show their appreciation, they couldn't eat just a little bit of each. Sometimes a man values the amount more than the taste. At those times, rather than rich, mind-blowing flavor, they craved simplicity. They couldn't say it out loud, but this was the tastiest thing they'd had today. I confirmed that by looking at their eyes as the judges smiled wryly. I'll praise your efforts. But today's contest was about curry. I'm not sure we can give a score to this. The teacher and the principal had folded their arms while they pondered the situation. My underlings, seeing that, saw the small glimmer of hope fade away and grew dejected. Ah, was this little surprise just not enough? 
Don't give up, Kei-chan, Mion whispered quietly. That's right. If I didn't push here... No, I'll have you give it a score. If you think curry and onigiri are really that different, you're sorely mistaken. Huh? My raccoon, what are you saying? How are they the same? The principal stopped the teacher. It looked like he was giving me one final chance. The judges, having eaten their fill, quietly waited for my statement. In its homeland of India, curry is usually eaten with a type of bread called naan, isn't it? Therefore, you could say that this cuisine we call curry rice is something that we have adopted and modified. Just as the teacher said at the beginning, it's a fusion of Indian and Japanese cuisine. I know what you're trying to say, my Barakum, but what does that have to do with onigiri? It's actually very simple. Both curry and onigiri are things made to let you enjoy eating rice. Rice was introduced to Japan from ancient China. Our agricultural forebears watered the fields, fighting the elements, disease, and pests to grow and raise our rice-centric culture. Yes, the Japanese people have formulated a plethora of dishes, but those were nothing more than attempts to find ways to enjoy eating rice. In other words, curry and onigiri are both the results of rice culture. It was scattered at first, but slowly grew into a steady roar. It was a thunderous applause that praised me. Enough with the nonsense already. I won't accept this. The teachers are only judging curry, you know. This is out of the question. It obviously deserves zero points. M Miss Keiji Kun did his best. Could you please acknowledge that? Today's class was supposed to be about curry. What should we do? Mion, stifling her laughter, stepped forward. There's a story about when a Michelin three-star chef from France came to Japan. The people from the hotel he was staying at had a whole bunch of ingredients from France imported. But the chef didn't even give them a second glance. I wonder why that was. They were ingredients from his homeland. The chef went to the local fish market and made a dish from a fresh fish caught in Japan. The culture of food isn't bound by predetermined rules. It's culture. If you come to Japan, you meld with Japanese culture and make something new. That's how curry and onigiri are the same. Mion. She was providing fire support. I had to be grateful. The judges were somehow moved by this complicated, yet baseless trivia. A stern look washed over the teacher's face as she refolded her arms. My butter coon, your pot of curry was flipped over, wasn't it? Even though I said at the beginning to be careful. I'm sorry. But as my butter coon and Sonazaki-san said, there are no boundaries in cuisine. If it's something that can amaze people, then it's not something that should be discriminated against just because of the form. Then, then... <laughs> for spilling your pot, minus 20 points. But just for today, for not giving up and doing your best, plus 20 points. I'll give you a hundred points. Bye, Butter-san! We did it! My underclassman laughed at me. A perfect score! We did it! We did it! The curry was spilled and our rice was taken. But we made a comeback. In the end, Rika-chan's curry also received full marks, so everybody but Rana had a perfect score. Since this contest was outside the scope of regular club activities, there wasn't any particular penalty game. Rana breathed a sigh of relief. Now then, as promised, Satoko, Rika-chan, I'll be taking your curry. <laughs> but but that means we won't have any lunch! <laughs> Satoko stomped angrily at the ground in frustration, but the price of defeat was absolute. Is what I wanted to say, but I'll show you some mercy. You can eat half. Thank you, Keiichi. My two protégés peered over from the sidelines, tears of joy streaming from their faces. We exchanged glances that would only be understood amongst men. We did it, my Barasan. Ah, this is all thanks to you. We flashed each other a thumbs up. Now I just have to give these to my pupils. I've gotten pretty hungry myself. I guess I'll have one of my onigiri. What? Huh? There was no trace of my onigiri. The ones I had set aside for myself included. As I peered around searching for them, the principal clapped a hand on my shoulder. <laughs> when I was listening to that speech you gave, the rice I was chewing on grew even more delicious. Ha 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 Uh, could it be that you also ate my share? <laughs> the principal simply laughed without answering. S seriously? 
My eyes half ringing with tears and my stomach rumbling, I was called over by the teacher. My better coon, because of the circumstances, I had to give you a perfect score, but you understand, right? Huh? Understand what? There was an odd glint in the teacher's eyes. If I had to describe it, it, it was curry colored. Like a pot of stew and curry, her eyes whirled around in a spiral. A chill washed over me. The teacher clutched me by the shoulders and drew me in closer until our noses were almost touching. Curry is this world's most respected and sacred of dishes. I will absolutely not allow it to be put in the same category as onigiri. You hear me? Curry was created in ancient India, one of the four great river valley civilizations, and was raved about during the reign of King Ashoka in Kapilavatsu for the birth of the Shakya at the International Food Expo, Michelin, Twirly Twirly, even the Eiffel Tower was pickled in shimmering curry turmeric, whether you are asleep or awake, curry, 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 curry. Hey, Keiichi-san, what are you stumbling around for? Cleaning up is part of cooking, too. Keiichi-kun, your eyes are all curried. Why is that? Why? Curry, curry, curry. <laughs> Yikes, she got him, huh? It's okay, he'll be back to normal by tomorrow. Probably. It wasn't that long before hunger brought me back to my senses. In the end, all of the onigiri was eaten by the principal, so I had to make do without lunch. Skipping lunch, I never knew the afternoon could be so long and painful. A feeling other than drowsiness made me space out. Are you alright, Keiichi-kun? That's why I said you shouldn't eat Raina's curry. As if I could eat this curry with enough salt in it to make my blood pressure rise just by looking at it. Is what I said as I initially refused. I could only regret it. The hunger. The stomach ache. Well, well. You did a good job making it through. Your absolutely hopeless situation, that is. Kei-chan, you're pretty strong when you're cornered, huh? I don't need any compliments right now. I need food. There's something for you to eat at home, right? We don't keep snacks lying around at home. And I'm out of cup noodles right now. <laughs> Since you're enduring that hunger so much right now, I'm sure tonight's dinner will be really tasty. I had absolutely no intention of laughing along. Well then, I'll take my leave. I have my part-time job again today. Sigh. It's really rough when you're not used to the work. Ah, that job at the Angel Mort family restaurant, huh? That uniform was somewhat stimulating. How? Oh. Being a waitress really is hard work. Eh? Michan is working as a waitress? Really? Really? What kind of place is it? Oh. N no, I'm... Right, I'm working at that toy store from the other day. Xion is the waitress. Ah, my bad. I completely forgot that was how it ended up being. Uh, I'm sorry, you guys look so similar I mixed you up. Keichi-kun, who's Shion? Reina asks the obvious question. Uh, um, Mion's younger twin sister. She's got a different personality, but she's a dead ringer for Mion. That's right. We look similar, but our personalities are completely different. I'm very kind and thoughtful, but Shion has a cold and scary personality. I think that when you guys were born, Xion got all the feminine aspects. Unlike Neon, she's a cute, cheerful girl. k k k k chan Rena interjected as her eyes darted back and forth from our exchange. Hmm? Is that true? Rena's never met her. Mi-chan, did you ever tell me you had a younger sister? Xion's existence was already being exposed as a cover-up. I couldn't help me on out here. I could only have her end the charade. 
Oh, yeah. I still haven't introduced her to you, Rena. Haha, <laughs> my younger sister's name is Xion. I don't know. I didn't ask. I never met her when I went to Michan's house. Uh, yeah, that. You know, I'm the only one that lives with Granny. Xion lives at the family home in Okinomiya. We're, we're not that close, so yeah, she doesn't come here too often. Hmm? Rena's face indicated that she wasn't sure if she was convinced. She was usually a bit of an airhead, but she was unusually sharp when it came to these kinds of things. Uh, well, it's not a lie. Please believe me. As she said, yeah, I believe you, a smile suddenly blossomed on Rena's face. Rena wants to meet her. I'll go and see her sometime. What store is she working at? What store? Um, uh, that is... Uh, she's getting more tangled in her little web. I could tell that Mion was getting increasingly frantic. I wanted to help her out, but it was hard for an outsider to butt in on family issues. Uh, uh, sorry, I have to get to work. Later. Rena, Keichan, see you tomorrow. Unilaterally ending the conversation, Mion headed home. No matter how you looked at it, she was running away. We'll just label this one as an emergency escape. Michan was kind of cute. I wonder why, I wonder why. <laughs> Rena giggled in amusement. I wonder when dinner is. Would lying down be the best way to conserve energy? I sprawled in the entryway without even taking off my shoes. As I was losing the last vestiges of my consciousness, the doorbell rang. It seemed I had a guest. Ah, come on in. It's open. I directed my listless voice at the door. Good afternoon. Huh? Keichan, what are you doing? It seemed my guest was Mion, or rather, Xion. She seemed shocked when she saw me sprawled out in the entryway. Is that Xion? Wait, why? I thought that Xion's existence was an illusion that was limited to when Mion was at the restaurant. That's why I never even considered that Xion would appear here. I heard from my sister. Because of club activities today, you weren't able to eat lunch, right? Yeah, it was a lot of trouble. Satoko spilled my pot, and you stole my rice. But but I'm Xion. She grew red and began to mope. That's right, she was the younger twin right now. Sorry, sorry. What's up? Did you bring something for me to eat? Oh my. It's somehow disappointing that you hit the nail right on the head, but here. With a disappointed smile, Xion held out the small bento box she had hidden behind her back. Huh? You really brought something to eat? Th thanks There was still some of the ground beef left over from what my sister brought to school. I knew it was going to be right before dinner, but I wondered if you'd want it. Am I bothering you? N not even a bit. I'm really happy. Can I really eat this? Sneaking a look inside the box, to say that she just put some leftovers inside would have been a lie. There was an elegant meal stuffed inside. Is it really okay? There's not, like, a ton of hot sauce mixed in or anything, right? Jeez. I'm not my sister. I wouldn't do that kind of thing. If you don't like it, you don't have to force yourself. I'll just go home and eat it myself. Saying that, she pouted cutely and made a motion as if to snatch the box back. There were some times that made me doubt that she was the same person as Mion, and this was undoubtedly one of those moments. I don't mind at all. I want to chow down on it with thanks from the bottom of my heart. It's not something to be so thankful about that your nose has to run. Xion, who had thought that I might not take the bento, looked down happily. There's not much, but do you want to come in? I can probably make tea or something. Uh, sorry, maybe some other time. I'm on my way to work. Oh, that's right. She did say that before. 
Just rinse the box out with water and give it back to my sister tomorrow, please. Uh, of course. It'd only be the proper thing to do after being allowed to eat something that looks this delicious. Well then, I'll take my leave. Uh, one last thing. Xion grew red again as she looked down once more. During that contest with the curry, my sister took your rice without permission, right? My sister fools around too much, so sometimes she gets carried away. She wasn't doing it just to be mean. Hey, hey. It's not like I mind that too much. There are no grudges when it comes to club activities, after all. In fact, I should be the one that's thankful for all the thrills and entertainment. Could you tell that to Mion for me? Yes, I think. My sister will be very happy to hear that. Well then, I have to go. Xion smiled brightly. After bowing deeply, she left as she looked at her watch. I'm happy, but is this really okay? I looked at the bento box that she'd left behind. A faint warmth spread through the palm of my hand. If it were me on, I could see hot sauce, mustard, maybe even a needle being mixed inside. But really, I don't think she would go so far as putting that needle in there. I opened the box once again and hesitantly tasted a bit. I took a bite, and another. There was no funny business. There was no danger at all, for it was delicious. That's right. That was Xion, not Mion, so there shouldn't have been anything to worry about. I rushed back to my room, eating as I gave my thanks. It was so delicious that my stomach could cry. Xion? No, Mion. When she heard I was so hungry I could die, she brought this over to me. It was delicious to the last bite. By the way, nothing strange had been mixed in. I was a bit embarrassed at myself for being so skeptical. Oh, we received a new tip. It was delicious. That is the end of chapter three. Let's go ahead and read the new tip and then we will end the episode. It was delicious. Hey, Mion, here. Uh, what is it, Kei-chan? I thrust the bento box she'd given me yesterday at her face. I had the food you gave me in it. Thanks. It was great. Hey, uh... Mion's face quickly flushed bright red. Hey now, you were the one pretending to be Xion when you gave it to me. You're gonna give it away if you get all red like that when you're being Mion. At this rate, she might trip and fall right into her own grave, so I decided to help her out. Listen, I was pretty hungry yesterday. Out of the blue, Xion came all the way to my house and gave me some food in a bento box. This is that box. Make sure you wash it out. Uh, uh, right. Xion's really considerate, huh? That was so transparent. Was Mion always this terrible at lying? Her expression was different than usual, but it looked strangely cute. So, what did you think? You two are like peas in a pod. You're twins, right? Obviously, you'd look the same. Uh, not, not that. Uh, Mion looked kind of bewildered, like she was waiting for a specific answer. When she said impression, maybe she didn't mean Xion, but the bento? Oh, of course. It was delicious. Uh, uh, really? I never lie about liking food. If I say something's good, then it's objectively good. You can feel free to give my recommendations to every single person you meet. Tell Xion it was seriously great, alright? Uh, okay. Tell Xion, right? I will. I think she'll be happy. <laughs> We're going along with Xion having given it to me, not Mion, aren't we? Yet her laugh, it came from deep down, and it sounded really happy. I guess she really can laugh nicely enough that just looking at her makes me feel better too. A sarcastic remark made its way onto my tongue, but I swallowed it back. As Mion went to put the bento box in her bag, she noticed a clattering noise. Kei-chan, there's something inside. Huh? Wow. Gah, <laughs> she opened it? The thing inside was a little embarrassing, so I wish she hadn't opened it here. Panicking, I hit it with my hands. Uh, well, 
This is... well, my mother told me to put them in as thanks. I didn't come up with it or anything. Don't get the wrong idea. It's so pretty. Candy. There was a handful of candies neatly wrapped in paper inside the sparkly clean pento box. When I was cleaning the box out yesterday in the sink, Mom came over and interrogated me. Then I fessed up as to who had given me the food. Then she told me that something like this called for a display of gratitude. I didn't want to, because it was embarrassing, so I argued that it wouldn't be like me to do that. Well, that's what happened. I mean, uh, I was so embarrassed it felt like fire might shoot out of my face. Mion laughing the whole thing off like she usually did would be fine, but for some reason, she was staring at the candy in the box with fascination. Th thank you. D don't thank me. Thank my mom. She put them in there. But besides, you're not the one I need to be thanking, right, Mion? Those are for Shion, okay? Uh, right. You're right. Okay. I'll be sure to tell Shion. I just know she'll be happy. Mion, looking a little downtrodden, put the lid back on the box. It seemed like I ended up saying something a little mean at the end. Michan, you look sort of cozy today. Did something happen? Did it? Perhaps she caught a fever? The red in her face is probably due to the increased body temperature. Hey, Rika, why are you petting my head? Satoko, I'm sure you'll be able to catch fever soon enough. Pet, pet. I'm loving this chapter so far. But anyway, that's going to be the end of chapter 3 of Watanagashi. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next chapter. Goodbye!